Good morning, and I'm Mike Rawlings, Mayor of Dallas, and I'm also Chair of the Work and Opportunity Task Force for the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Uh, for the last uh, two days, we have uh, had 30 mayors, 100 workforce professionals here in Dallas, and I hope they've had a good time. And that's uh, Besides learning, we wanted to make sure we showed uh, Dallas off well, and I, I think we've uh, We've um, done some fun things. Uh, we've uh, got to go to the Cowboys game yesterday, and then we uh, went over to the new Nilo Hotel, and we had uh, dinner at the top so they could get a great uh, view of uh, the city of Dallas. One of the reasons we wanted to show off Dallas and have this fall leadership meeting here um, is because we have some news to announce uh, today and that is that the U.S. Conference of Mayors annual conference will be coming here in June of 2014. This is a very important meeting for the U.S. Conference of Mayors. Uh, it was in Orlando last year. We'll be in Vegas this next year and then be coming to Dallas. As you know, Dallas' focus on convention and, and tourism business is extremely important. And to be able to get uh, all the mayors across the United States to visit uh, this city and uh, let us show off what we've got to offer the rest of the country, I think, is an extremely important strategic moment in the life of Dallas. I've been told that it had, this conference has not been here since 1965. Is that right, Tom? Wow. So uh, it's been a long time, and it's a very, very important day, and I'll be calling on the uh, Dallas business community to step up and show um, uh, the 300 mayors as good a time as we've shown the 30 mayors. But we did do a lot of work today, and uh, it was led by uh, the president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, uh, Philadelphia Mayor, um, Mayor Michael Nutter. So I'll uh, give the podium to him. Mayor Nutter. Thank you. Mayor Rawlings, thank you uh, very, very much, uh, certainly to you and your staff. Uh, the hospitality has been tremendous. Uh, the learning has been great, uh, and uh, we are very, very pleased uh, to be here for this 2012 Fall Leadership Conference uh, in Dallas and, of course, look forward uh, to coming back in 2014. I know I can uh, say on behalf of the mayors who are assembled here and uh, many others who are participating uh, that we've had a wonderful time uh, here in Dallas, but it takes a lot of work to put on these kinds of conferences and certainly want to thank uh, our CEO and Executive Director Tom Cochran and his staff uh, doing, working with uh, Mayor Rawlings' uh, staff uh, to put on uh, this conference. I have some talking points. You're going to hear from a number of uh, the mayors uh, who are assembled uh, and then, of course, be glad uh, to take questions. We're here in the great city of Dallas with mayors from around the country to strategize on the best ways to prepare our workforce for the jobs of tomorrow. We're meeting with private sector representatives to expand job creation and also work with our community colleges to establish job training programs. U.S. cities require a highly skilled and trained workforce that can compete globally. And there's nothing more important than building a successful programs that support the individuals in our communities and help them to develop skills for the jobs of the future and enable personal and professional growth. And so today, We've made it our business to know exactly what fields will be growing over the next five to ten years so that we can match job seekers with the types of jobs that are available. We're releasing a report prepared by IHS Global. This is our report. Identifying specific sectors of the economy that we will see uh, the most growth take place. This new report projects over 8 percent job growth in the United States economy over the next five years, adding 11 million jobs. The report also identifies professional and business services as the lead sector, adding over 3 million jobs over the next five years, with most of that growth coming from the administrative support sector, subsector. Other job contributors also include, of course, education and health services, projected to create over 2 million jobs over the next five years. And as one of our sessions today focused on, we expect significant growth in the manufacturing sector as well. Finally, the report also analyzes job projections for 15 major metro areas. And you can go through uh, the report, but let me tell you that numerous metro areas will see double-digit double digit job growth 
including our own area where we're today, the Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington uh, uh, region, which is expected to see over 12 percent growth based on our report. The bottom line, as the U.S. economy continues to recover and Congress at times seems paralyzed, mayors are acting and acting now. Congress needs to do its job so that we can all do our jobs and stay focused on the number one priority, putting our citizens and putting Americans back to work. And so with that, let us hear from our Vice President, uh, Mesa's Mayor Scott Smith. Thank you, Mayor Nutter. And I'd like to also thank Mayor Rawlings and the uh, City of Dallas and Arlington and uh, the whole Dallas metro region for uh, really pulling out all stops to uh, make us feel welcome. But I thought uh, it was a little bit over the top when I'm walking through the bowels of Cowboy Stadium and I run into former Cowboy quarterback Danny White, uh, who literally grew up next door to me in Mesa, Mesa boy always, and th that was a nice touch. I appreciate, I appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, taste, money, but yeah, taste of home. I mean, I, I run into them all the time, but that's okay. Thank you. Uh, you know, in, as mayors, we talk a lot about structural deficits. We see this in our government today, and you hear that at state level and at the city level, where we have a situation where, regardless of the economy, we have problems meeting needs and resources. Uh, as we're talking today about workforce development, we also, it also highlighted the huge structural deficit we have. It is sobering to know that in a, in a country which is suffering from chronic unemployment, we have well over three million well-paying jobs that are going unfilled right now. And the reason they're going unfilled is because of a lack of skilled American workers. And we are not meeting the needs of these, uh, uh, of the, of these workers, our citizens. One of the reasons is that the mayors talk a lot about infrastructure investment, and we, and we often are uh, accused of just focusing on roads and bridges and things like that, but actually infrastructure includes all the assets that make for a great uh, America, and that includes our educational institutions. It's very, very sobering that uh, across the country, even here in Texas and California, places like that, our community colleges, our, our universities and colleges are fighting for an ever-decreasing, shrinking pool of money that goes to things like uh, we've talked about the three things that uh, government does. We, uh, we medicate, we educate, we incarcerate. And it seems like as we focus so much on the two bookends that less and less gets thrown into education. Workforce development is about, is about the intersection of education and opportunity. And that's why we have over three million jobs going unfilled. So if there's one thing that we can say as we, in, as we expand our call for not only an increase in infrastructure investment, but recognizing that if we fail to invest in the things that are important in our cities, if we fail to invest in our infrastructure across the board, we are denying ourselves not only short-term benefits, but also denying future generations of the opportunities that they deserve. So thank you once again, uh, Dallas, for uh, being such a great host, but also there is important work going on here. The cities are where the action is, where we're economic growth, and activity happens. And I think you'll be hearing a lot more from us in the future, uh, and especially in 2014. Congratulations to Dallas. When we come back here in force, hopefully we'll be well on the way to coming up with true workforce uh, solutions, and we can bridge that gap. If not, I guarantee you, you'll hear a lot more from the, from the mayors of America. Thank you. We'll now hear from our second vice president of the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Sacramento's Mayor Kevin Johnson. All right, I too want to give greetings to Mayor Rawlings, a beautiful host and all the great work that you're doing here in Dallas. Very proud to, to be here on behalf of all the mayors. Uh, Mr. President, thank you for your leadership as well. And, uh, and Scott, thank you also. Um, there's a theme going on day in and day out around this country is that we need jobs, jobs, jobs. And what we mayors realize is there's jobs out there, but we don't have the skills in young people to meet those job opportunities. And this particular leadership conference today has been amazing. It's been eye-opening, I think, for a lot of us. It's very clear that cities are the metro economies, are the economic engine for our country. We know that. Um, we learned today that the employment growth over the next five years is projected to be about 8.6%. And we must align those jobs with the areas that our economy needs to grow. And that's kind of our commitment as mayors. Now, here's the bad news. We are not preparing our children to be competitive in a global workforce. 
<laughs> that is the bad news. Out of 34 and under out of 34 industrialized countries, U.S. places 14th in reading, 17th in science, and 25th in math. We are not preparing our young people. And we as mayors have to change the trajectory of our young people. Unfortunately, over the next 20 years, there's going to be 120 million jobs. And we're only going to be able to fill 50 million of those jobs. That means 70 million jobs are going to be filled by children from other countries. That is not the America that we know. I'm very proud that our president um, has made a commitment to do something big and bold. He wants to lead the world in percentage of Americans who are getting degrees in post-secondary education by 2025. We as mayors support that. This is not about partisanship. This is about putting our children first. This administration is calling on a billion dollar investment in reforming the Perkins program. This will align career and tech education essentially taking classroom learning and teaching and matching it with the world business needs. It strengthens our community college programs and certainly partners with workforce development. One of the things that we highlighted today, Mayor Combalden from West Sacramento, were career academies. Career academies are partnerships between high school and employers, integrating career interrelated curricula with work experience and local employees. Mr. Combalden said very clearly, and we as mayors all agree with this, we want to make sure that every student graduates from high school who is ready to go to college and take advantage of career opportunities. We as mayors can lead and play a critical role in four areas. One, at the policy level. We as mayors have to advocate for policy that put kids first and create these opportunities. Number two, we as mayors can advocate at the district level, bring our district superintendents together and start talking about what we need to do to help match up the opportunities. Work-based learning, this is a tremendous opportunity to make sure that our kids are getting hands-on experience, especially when it comes to internships and job shadowing. The more relevant learning is for our young people, the more they come to school and the more they excel. And then lastly, we need to connect and articulate for both schools and employers, bringing them together and matching the opportunities for, for young people. This is a tremendous opportunity for us as a country to take advantage of where we are today. We had great presentations from a lot of people, and the bottom line is this. There are jobs out there. We've got to make sure we prepare our young people with education and training to take advantage of those opportunities. So thank you very much, Mayor Rawlings, and uh, we're looking forward to enjoying Dallas. We'll now hear from uh, one of our past presidents, uh, Mayor Elizabeth Kautz, uh, talking about uh, the role of Congress. Thank you, Mr. President, and uh, thank you, Mayor Rawlings, for great hospitality to your staff and to the citizens of uh, your city. Mayors across the nation all know that the issue that we face, as has been spoken about eloquently by my colleagues, is not just at the huge industry level, but also with our franchise and small business. So. Workers are needed throughout all sectors and all sizes of our economy here in the United States. And so it is important for all of us to work together with Congress. And my congressman, John Klein, is the chairman of the uh, Education and Workforce Committee. So we have been working very closely with him. The U.S. Conference of Mayors and Workforce Council have been working very uh, diligently to look at how to reform this, to take a very, very difficult and complicated program and simplify it and make it uncomplicated so that people can use it. And the solution that uh, the Congress have come up with is that there will be three main areas that we need to focus on, and we, the U.S. Conference of Mayors and Workforce Council, all agree because our Workforce Council have been working very diligently with the congressmen on these issues for House filed 4297. And that is, first of all, to consolidate the ineffective and redundant programs and make sure that people can access the programs and navigate it easily. Second, cut through all of the bureaucracy, take away all of the onerous and difficult areas that get in the way of people getting what they need and being trained for the jobs. And then thirdly, empower employers and promote accountability. We continue to work together on this and I hope that all of us will work together to encourage Congress to pass this bill and to make sure that it is fully funded so that our people can truly 
be skilled ready, and have the knowledge base to fill those three million jobs that are available in our country today. The crisis is about knowledge base and skill ready for the jobs. We have the jobs. So thank you. This is an important issue for mayors of America, and uh, we're ready to continue to work on this. And now we hear from Mayor Frank Orders, who is the chair of the Standing Committee on the issue of workforce. I was just listening to the Michael Tess show. Ever heard that show, NPR? He says, count 1,000, count 2 before you speak. So you'll feel more comfortable and your audience feels comfortable. Are you comfortable now? <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Officers. I'm, I'm so comfortable. I'm so angry. Did you ever hear that television show and that movie, I'm Mad as Hell and I want to do something about it? Well, let me tell you, I'm mad as hell and I want to do something about it. It is, I can only be redundant. You heard it all. This is such a good platform. It's such a good uh, meeting about workforce and getting our people educated into the workplace. Mayors, you've said it all. We're not ready in this great country to employ those skills and, and people that we have and young people in our great country. And you know what? I point the finger at Washington. They will not listen to us mayors. We're ready. We're ready. Show me the money. Give me the money and I'll show you how to put people to work. That's what mayors do. But Washington is so partisan, they don't want to hear that. Well, you know what? I'm telling them, I'm fed up. Let's do it. And I'm telling you, I'm sure that every mayor will want to be on our committee now, Mr. President, because of this great meeting. So uh, I'm just honored and privileged to be chair of the committee. I'm ready to work. Are we ready, mayors? Yeah. All right, let's yeah. do it. And, and to think he did that after listening to a John Tesh CD. <laughs> John Tesh CD. Yeah. Let me encourage everyone uh, in their uh, private time in a uh, <laughs> secure environment to listen to that show. Um, and, uh, but don't come to a press conference afterwards. <laughs> Mayor Orders, thank you so, so very much. We'll, uh, we'll be pleased to uh, take any questions from the uh, members of the media about our announcement today. Can you just do me a favor and, and name and identify yourself? What outlet you're with? Uh, no Association Press. Uh, it's you know, this report talks about some of the jobs that you could do with the job Yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's a number of things. Um, a lot of it has to do with the folks who are up here with me and hundreds of mayors all across the United States of America. And at times, it is uh, happening, notwithstanding uh, the lack of action uh, in Washington, D.C. I don't necessarily know that these are mixed or divergent messages. I think there's a very clear message. There is job growth. We need to continue funding, for instance, job training, workforce development programs instead of cutting them as Congress has been doing. The disconnect is between the Congress and the rest of reality about what's taking place in the United States of America. This is a time for more investment and the report tells you where to invest. I mean, this is the recipe here. All you have to do is follow it. It's very clear, breaks out the sectors, talked about, talks about a number of metro areas, 15 across the country. I mean, it could not be uh, more elucidating. Uh, you know, I'm not sure what other next step, uh, other than maybe sitting down with all 535 members and walking them through uh, page by page, I'm not exactly sure what more uh, we can do. Here's the formula. This is where it's going to take place. This is what you need to do. Do your job so we can do our job to get jobs for Americans. Pretty straightforward. What's your take on the realistic, the realistic chance that Congress will take these 
You know, look, I'm, I'm the eternal optimist. I have to be. I'm a mayor. Uh, all of us uh, here uh, wake up every day, notwithstanding whoever's doing what they're doing or not doing what they should be doing, uh, that uh, we have the capacity to do some things. What we're asking is that our partners, and when the political silly season ends, someone's going to win, and everybody needs to get back to work. So we are hopeful that even through the course of this campaign, let's hear some discussion about this, because this is real. Campaign will be over, everybody recover, then let's get to work. And so what we're doing is what we always do. We're preparing for the future, we're laying out a road, uh, road map uh, and a blueprint to get some things done. Uh, the Congress and the President all have to work together on behalf of Americans. Millions of Americans still don't have jobs. Millions have stopped looking. Let's do our job together so that we can change that. So I'm not going to subscribe to and I will not buy into nothing is possible. We've faced great challenges in this country before. We face them every day. We balance our budgets. We put people to work. We make sure that our cities are safe, our kids are getting an education, uh, and do the things that mayors do. And so I think that is the example that we'd like to see the Congress and uh, the administration follow. Michael. Yes. Sure. I'm sorry. Mike. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Well, that's all right. One of the things that I'm Mike Coleman, mayor of Columbus, Ohio, one of the things that all these mayors do uh, better than Congress is that we work with our business communities. Uh, we develop partnerships. And uh, in working with our business communities, developing the partnerships each and every one of us in our own communities have, we've been successful in spite of Congress. In Columbus, this report says that our five-year projection is 11 percent growth in our job market. That's a good thing. But we're doing it in spite of Congress. I think Congress is broken. And, but but, in, but all, all, all economics is local, just like politics. All politics is local. In fact, we ought to call it localnomics uh, because all of us are very experienced in working with our business communities in education, in job training, and that's the lesson learned that Congress needs to learn from mayors around the country. And, and if I could, Mr. President, yeah, one sure. quick point uh, to that question. We're here meeting with the workforce professionals and the business community, large businesses. They know that the action is where the mayors are. So I think the answer to your question is they're here, ask them about what our estimations and our, our, our causes are that we want to do. And I think that answers your question that it is reality, it will happen, we just want it to happen now. I think increasingly you'll hear, and I'll finish on that question and then we'll take some others. I think you're increasingly actually going to hear very loudly nationally the business community also speaking up to say, look, we're trying to create jobs, trillions of dollars sitting on the sidelines. We need the Congress and the, and the administration to work in greater partnerships so that we can grow our business, create opportunity, put people to work. I don't understand who can be against that. Politics is one thing. Running the country, running our cities, running our states is something else. It's being the business that we all signed up for, help people. Next question. Yes, ma'am. Well, as in most things uh, in economics, you have a number of different forces uh, and challenges going on at the same time. And while professional and business services may be one of the leading areas, uh, certainly it's not the only. Again, manufacturing, uh, we talked about, uh, certainly education and medicine have been stable over time. You're going to see more investment in the energy and sustainability uh, sector and green tech. But even within the question that you asked, there are high-level jobs and there are low-level jobs. And when you look at the unemployed, and especially the longer-term unemployed, they are the ones who need those entry-level, uh, possibly lower-paying jobs that put them on a career path to move up. And so uh, we're a country that uh, has to be able to provide a wide array of job opportunities, economic opportunity, uh, for a wide array of Americans who are suffering at a variety of different levels. So I actually see that, again, as a strength, uh, as highlighted in the report, uh, not uh, in any way uh, a, a deficit. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Um, 
Mike. If I, oh, go ahead, Mayor. Come on. If I could add, um, the report talks about growth, but even if we want to maintain, with the boomers retiring, maintain those jobs in science and technology for our education levels going down, uh, we may not have the workforce. And so I think that's what we're highlighting here, that we have unemployment, but we're going to be creating millions of jobs, but our young people may not be ready. And in the past, there were very strong bipartisan supports of workforce training programs. And instead of funding them, they're actually cutting a lot of the ladder. So earlier today, I talked about the fact that here we're in the middle of the worst recession and they cut the summer mayor's job programs, which are usually the first step for a lot of urban kids into the workforce. And so and it, that's something that just actually makes it worse rather than helping us in the middle of a recession. And all of us benefited from the, the um, president's um, stimulus growth jobs. We, we didn't lose teachers, we didn't lose police officers, we didn't lose firefighters, and we were able to create some new infrastructure jobs. And by, again, not renewing that, um, that doesn't help. Uh, and you made a comment that, that in professional, it tends to be low-paying jobs. That's yesterday's economy. Our greatest gap, those three million jobs we're talking about, are skilled positions. And what we're finding out is that what historically were service jobs are no longer minimum wage jobs. Look at call centers. I was reading an article that was very interesting, talked about how call centers have changed, uh, where they used to have just people in the back just answering phones with the new, uh, the new techniques we have that when you call in, that person has all these metrics that the computer has analyzed and they're prepared. That's not an entry-level job anymore. It's a skilled position. Call centers now hiring PhDs to help with the uh, with uh, developing these metrics, and so the problem is, is not only to get catch up because workforce development is not a poverty program, it's an opportunity program. It's about taking people at this level and putting them to that level. And I think that's one of the misnomers we have is we're taking completely unskilled people and getting them in entry level jobs. No, we're taking people who have one set of skills and we're bridging the gap to higher opportunity with an elevated set of skills, and that happens all along the spectrum. Yeah. And like I said, now call centers are having to to uh, some, many the, the successful ones are having to hire much more skilled people who have to think on their feet, be creative, handle problems. That's not the economy of yesterday, and that's that's what we're the the, the gap we're trying to bridge here too. We're gonna. Um, I should have done this earlier. Ask the mayors uh, when they come up, please identify yourselves, and we're going to have a go round uh, to uh, let you know who all the mayors are. You heard a second ago from Mayor Mike Coleman in Columbus. You heard just a second ago uh, from Mayor Kwan in Oakland, and Mayor, come on up. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, my name is Ken Miyagashima, Mayor of Las Cruces, New Mexico. Your question is a good one, and, and actually it's concerning for me. I hope to, in about 90 days, announce a uh, business coming to Las Cruces, providing over 600 jobs, paying 65000 a year. They're more high-tech, and one of the things that concerns us is will we have the, the workforce to provide to them? Uh, that's one thing that, as Mayor Johnson was talking about, business really knows no boundaries. They, if they're going to come in, long gone are the days when you had on-the-job training. You have to have a trained workforce, and if you're not ready, they'll go to another city. And so we, we are fortunate that we have a good partnership with our community college, because uh, we did pick up about 200 more jobs that are paying about 45000 a year in manufacturing, something that we're not used to doing, but fortunately we have that good role with the community college. And so why, that's why this, this, uh, today's uh, meetings are very important get a chance to learn more and more about what other communities, what other cities are doing. And so I just want to thank uh, the leadership for, for this great conference. And uh, Frank, appreciate uh, your comments as well. <laughs> we always appreciate Frank's comments. Let me uh, take one last question. I need to uh, get the mayors back in and also uh, have, a, uh, have them identify themselves. Who wants uh, last question? No. OK, why don't we start on the end there. And uh, Mayor? Hmm? Mayor Elizabeth Coutts, Burnsville, Minnesota. Jim Schmidt, the mayor of Green Bay, Wisconsin. Mike Coleman, mayor of Columbus, Ohio. Christopher Cabal, the mayor of West Sacramento, California. Scott Smith, mayor of Mesa, Arizona. Stephanie Rawlings Blake, mayor of Baltimore, Maryland. Sorry. Sacramento mayor Kevin Johnson. Jean Kwan, mayor of Oakland. Brenda Lawrence, mayor of South Hill, Michigan. Kimmy Agashima, mayor of Las Cruces, New Mexico. And Mark Burroughs, mayor of Denton, Texas. And we're going to have uh, Mayor Rawlings uh, give us a uh, closing.
closing out. Mayor. Thank you, and again, I appreciate all you mayors coming to, to Dallas. Uh, this has been very helpful for um, our city, and we look forward to preparing for 2014. Uh, let me underline how important this issue is to the city of Dallas as well. We are planning to grow by 12.8 percent in the next five years. Are we going to have the human beings to fill those jobs? That's the question. I think the stop the presses here is you have mayors being pro-business, pro-business, but saying we need help. We need to consolidate our workforce programs, rationalize them, make them work better for business, and then our citizens will win. Thank you very much. Thank you.